decades, it's brought the past to life, recreating and celebrating the glory days of Manitoba's fur trade. But now, horror overshadows the history at Lower Fort Garry. When he went to ask her a question, she looked up and disappeared. Ghost stories have long been told at the fort, like a crying young girl in this guest cottage, supposedly seen rocking in the chair to comfort herself. When you're in here, you can hear uh, sound sort of thing, maybe someone in the other room. You can hear little footsteps like a child running. That story was put to the test when Hollywood-based Ghost Hunters International visited Lower Fort Garry for an episode that aired in the States in April. Can you tell me who you are? Why you're still here? We're just going to go into the warehouse. Carolyn Weiss has toured visitors around for more than a decade, including showing the site to the Ghost Hunters crew. She says she's witnessed things she can't explain and refuses to work alone in certain buildings. I just feel like sometimes maybe I'm trespassing on something that shouldn't be here. So I always have a lot of respect for the buildings when I walk in them. And in fact, one of my little things is when I come into a building, I always say hello, whoever's in there, so. Built in the early 1830s by the Hudson's Bay Company, Lower Fort Gary was a fur trading post and supply depot for the Red River Settlement. It's also where Treaty No. 1 was signed. In the 1970s, Parks Canada transformed it into one of the country's top historic sites. It's restored back to the, the mid-1800s, and uh, you go through the, the fort and uh, meet characters of the past, people who used to live or work at Lower Fort Gary. It's almost like we play house. Lower Fort Gary has also served as Manitoba's first insane asylum and first penitentiary, creating the perfect backstory for some terrifying tales. It is rumored that uh, there was a criminal who died here um, during the penitentiary. His name was Thomas Slack, and um, he uh, apparently shot himself on the third floor. That's also where staff say they've seen some strange things. We also have had stories of maintenance workers who have been called because the alarm's gone off, um, which usually means there's someone inside the building. And as they've come up, they'll see someone on the third floor, but the doors will still be locked. And when they come in, there's no one in here. In the very spot where Slack died, a red stain. They've tried a lot of different chemicals and sort of solutions and whatever, you know, home remedies, but they just can't get it out. During their visit, ghost hunters spent some time like searching for Slack in the here. warehouse. Mr. Slack, don't be afraid of us. Can you give us a sign that you're here, Mr. Slack? The crew heard some strange noises, noise. but found nothing more. Similar noises have spooked and startled Parks Canada staff for years. There's been a lot of encounters uh, with our staff in the past people, everything from being tapped on the shoulder to seeing things out of the corner of their eye. Many of those experiences happen in the fur loft. Things coming off the walls here and flying out of the shelves. That keeps happening near an unexplained cold spot. As the ghost story goes, a six foot long box is buried six feet below, found during excavation, but never removed. Three floors above, a security guard claims to have witnessed one of the fort's most famously frightening sights. He found the man's lying on the bison furs here, and uh, when he went to talk to him, the man just sort of got up. He didn't say anything, he just sort of looked at him. And so the security guard turned to take him with him, and then he turned around to make sure he was following, and he saw him go right through the wall. Stories that are impossible to prove, but tales that remain entertaining and have even shed more light on the fort's past. The story about the children came out before we even knew that this was a sick home for children. So it wasn't something that was created as a result of seeing the history. We actually went and discovered the history as a result of the ghost story. Parks Canada is cashing in on Creepy, offering spooky tours that sell out every October. It presents a different market. I think it's something that people are, are certainly looking for. They want to come here and hear ghost stories, come for our Halloween program, and just maybe see the fort from a different angle.